So something that bothers me a lot is that when people say the cult is getting more and more unaffordable, and that means that only people that should go to cult are people that afford cult because student debt is building up. And they point out to the correct logical argument that um, loans that have been given out by the government and other institutions and the press go calls has actually made calls more expensive because when you have all these loans, what happens is that calls are see they can charge more money and what people want to go calls, say so increase the amount they charge and that increases student debt. The whole big problem with this argument and where it all falls apart horrendously is that if we make calls less afford, um, less people go to college, who are the poor people that cannot afford to go to college as much? It's going to be, um, it's going to be non-white individuals, and then it's going to be people from poor backgrounds, immigrants, and so on, and disabled people, and it's going to cause an inter more and more of an intergenerational um, gap. But not only that is that. It's not only, there's some jobs you don't need to go call to earn as much money. Calls doesn't make always mean you earn more money than if you don't go call. That is totally true. However, this, most of the time, going to calls make, means you earn more money and more power. The other thing is that even if you don't earn more money, it can give you a whole much more influence. A lawyer, you might become rich, but a lawyer might have more political influence in his gaming system. A person that understands certain laws. A doctor can seem more well informed in public health matters and might be consulted more, and so on and so on. So knowledge is power to us to control the system. There are also the people that write the history textbooks, literally, who influence what is sophisticated or not. So getting rid of a significant portion of the population also means that the callers themselves suffer because they don't see as many diverse viewpoints and don't have art from many minority communities or learn alternative ways of talking or maybe learn practices to the soul practices that might have ideas from modern things like some modern medicine has been based on traditional medicine ideas of traditional herbs everything from willow bark to um to anti-malarial drugs all originally came from traditional medicines some cancer treatments uh, so you are missing out on the wealth and stuff and reinforcing a certain hierarchy that can get worse and worse. What they don't talk about is instead how to make college more affordable. That's not just giving out loans, simple base loans that just make their system more and more because the greedy system does they want, will increase the prices. And here are just to show you how we can easily start coming up with ideas. Here are 20 ideas that I just listed off the bat. Um, my first idea is to make more virtual colleges, which are oftentimes cheaper to run, and they can also be more per personal. Now, that also means that something I forgot to say is that calls they say is not for everybody, and it's true. For a lot of disabled people, you may um, argue more than calls is not for it because it's not accommodating if you're in a wheelchair, if you have physical disabilities, oftentimes if you have um, executive dysfunction and can't keep organized, if you have speech, if you have speech or language difficulties, it might be harder, but also from people that have to work more shifts. But that doesn't mean we should not try and make it for everybody. It might not be good, the lecture might be not the best way of learning, but maybe that kid learns better from a video or something. So I'm also addressing that to diversify colleges. So the first one I want to talk about is virtual colleges. Virtual colleges can be a lot cheaper than um, a physical college. Now you do miss on some experiences, but it really depends on what type of experience you're doing. More and more stuff is computer science or online. So why not also learn about it online? More and more stuff is, um, it's also classes, you can also do hybrid approaches to save money that the kid doesn't have 10 calls a full time, but like you can have some classes that are just Literally just test and stuff, and you can learn all the test material and everything beforehand. It's not a practical course 
we're talking and, let, and discussing things back and forth. Those ones you might want to have more in person, but these ones you can get rid of those ones and save some money. And those, or you could have a whole, some certificates wholly offered like this. And those test-based courses, you might be saying, well, they can see on test if they're home. Well, maybe just they have to now and then go to a cheap testing facility just for that test with anti-cheating measures. And that test just like once or twice a year. And you can even make this program more flexible so it's even better for people that are disabled. You can have um, in-person conversations to test people virtually. You can have projects and even if they cheat on a project, they might so they know how to get the resources together. If you have a program project and somehow they cheat, well, at least they know how to get the resources together in some way. There's a lot of other ways to test. So virtual ones, and I talk about the test-based courses. And thinking about test-based courses, you might not even have to attend a single lecture. You just skip all the lectures, take one test. If you pass it, you pass it. Or something like that. And you don't, might not even require a teacher. A teacher might be a side thing. So you could even stack up more degrees or more learning in page. So that is one idea. Now, the second idea I want to talk about is mini college programs. Instead of a four-year program, a two-year program that might be much more affordable, or a one-year program. Maybe this program is more intense so you can compact it. Maybe it's less intense. Maybe it's just to get you a job and later on, you can finish the rest of your college later on, but this gets you a minor degree or a certificate in something. You could also um, have, have many colleges add up to a full college, and instead you could have someone start attending part of the college in like high school more, or, and then, when, then they have a pre-thing, so then they can spread out the payment over more years. So they attend minutes of college programs throughout high school, or after the job or something, and then they slowly get the full four years of college, but over six or so years, and each year they have to pay less. So that stacks up less at once. They can afford it more, or they could take time off. That's kind of my whole idea at this place. Now, the next idea I have is more technical college and schools. And when you have something that's more technical, and I mean like you learn software engineering or very, or how to build cars, or something very welding, something very, very practical immediately gives you a job, and while you're learning it, you're also doing a job, actually. You're actually doing programming and building stuff. This technical idea would mean that people can pay back the loans more faster, the schools themselves can lower the cost because they're making some money, and so on and so on. So many countries actually kind of do that already, and I skipped number three, so I'll get back to it. Many colleges actually do, do that in other countries, such as I know in Europe, there's usually two tracks for a lot of schools, and also in Canada, the more technical one for media jobs, that's usually cheaper, and the less technical one. And the technical one, also you can work under people that are happy to have you, kind of like a paid, in, kind of like an intern, um, and in a non-technical track. The third one that I skipped, and I think this is the biggest one, is why doesn't the government open up public schools and that teach a wide variety of subjects? And these public colleges would mean science and innovation and also literature and art will increase as you can hire more people to work in these departments. It would... Um, mean more education. It also would mean that you can have more government programs that are coordinated, because universities are usually not the best coordinated with each other, but now you can have vast government sharing networks of information, ideas, of resources, So you can, and also you can build bigger things than a university. You can build even bigger labs that with billion dollar equipment that more people could use. So it increases like the ability to do science in that way and for students to interact with it. And with the public college, you can also, the um, things is not as for profit, so you can focus more on education, unless on football or athletics. And that means you can make stuff also allow for more alternatives and take more risks. 
not only higher students that might be high risk, high return, which I hate saying, but might have to leave or something after a semester due to health problems, something like that. So you can take more chances than the typical ones. So I really think public college is the biggest. And yes, it might be a massive program that might mean a massively higher taxes, but it will return it back to society in not the money, well, in the money, you can argue, but also a ton of it will return to society in basic innovation, which you can't look for. Like in the old days, people forget kings might have been richer than the average folks. Kings might be super rich, but they didn't have access to modern medicine. They didn't have access to cars. They didn't have access to iPhones. So you might have been uh, poor if you look at how much wealth you have compared to a king, but you can do so much more than a king. Kings couldn't even think about flying to other countries in the old days. They could not even think about what an iPhone could do or some of the help or get cancer treatment. So like the innovation from these new kids and innovation is also an art and entertainment and also just making society better, clean up society, care workers, everything. They all can mean that a public college and all these college programs we're talking about will have a massive return for society. The fifth thing I want to talk about is a program that was been introduced in such places as Australia and it has been widely successful. And that is you pay after you get a job. So that earns a certain amount of money. So if you don't have a job yet, your loan, you don't have to pay you back your loan. If your job is not only enough money, you don't have to pay back your loan. Or if you're out of job employment temporarily, this me you only start paying back your loan once you have a job that's high enough paying. This means that you don't have to worry about debt crippling you from moving up and taking opportunities after college. And then you can also means that students can take more risky bets that might mean them more high because you don't have to worry about first getting a job that's just paying back the basic. They can look for better jobs or gain more experience or they can spend longer time in school because they're not immediately worried. And when you spend longer, that returns back when they get a PhD might be even higher in that job. So they might make even more money and people pay back, back it even faster and better. Now, does that mean that everyone will ever get this high paying job? Probably no, but a significant amount would. And those people that are not, their education is still worth it again, because they might return it in other ways, not suppose the power, they might make better, they might make better decisions politically for better political candidates. They might become, um, they might be able to educate the kids better. They might be able to educate the neighbors better. They may be able to fix things, do their own job better, even if it's not a high paying job. They may be able to have better conversations with the neighbors or be less informed or they can be taken care of less. I'm sorry, taken less advantage of because they know the tricks with math or the tricky wording or anything, and they can just pierce through it better. Less manipulable. An educated society is better. Another idea that has been floated, that I've floated around, is that causes, the highest paid jobs now in causes, are by far the administrator, where the professors' um, wages have gone down significantly over it compared to the rest of society, but administrators keep earning more and more money. And there's more and more administrators in colleges that just don't do anything. Also, sports teams are earning more and more money in sports and athletic divisions. They're becoming a bigger, bigger part of colleges. If we figure out some ways to cut the, how much money they earn and we turn it back into actually learning and educating people and cut back the amount of administrators, which a public college could do, saving them a ton of money, then we could significantly lower the cost of college and free up some money. Now that could be a tax on the wealth, on wealthy people, so people pursue wealth less. That could be um, giving professors and teachers actual benefits and non-professors um, less benefits and then still taxing them, taxing them as much. That could be a law. Some of these laws are more controversial than others. Some, there could be a law that says you can only be paid X amount compared to the rest of employers, employees of X, Y, Z. There could be a law that um, 
it could be just a cultural shift and talking about it and shaming people so people do not pursue these jobs or people look down upon these jobs more. Uh, you know, cultural shift could redo it, but it would be slow, but it would be a massive way of doing it. It could be um, promoting it to other people with power to cut them out, such as administrators cutting other administrators out, a dog-eat-dog -dog world, which is not the best. It could be that um, we have more investigations administrators and we cut out the ones that are abusive, because many of them are abusive. Um, money scandals, um, they discriminate against disabled people. I can have, I have some horrible stories that for another time, but so on, so on. And questioning their roles, people also, a society also, if we just start questioning their roles, we're less likely to hire them and kick them out in the first place. Then if we promote people doing useful jobs instead, not just any jobs, we could also get them just to leave on their own to do some job in a place that is more fulfilling. Um, for the soul and not some stupid mindless job that is what they're doing at the moment. Okay, so now the seventh one. Loans by affordability. What I mean by this is that some colleges are made to be more affordable than other ones because they have spend less money on miscellaneous things. Such as my such as my school that spent a ton of money on a millions of dollars actually on a sundial no one wants and a logo we design. But if we give loans to schools that are make the school program more affordable in the first place, then incentivizes kids to go to the schools and make those things cheaper, and for schools to start making themselves cheaper. Now, to some extent, schools start make, make making deals with each other, so. No one undercuts the other one, so they're all awful expensive, so no one can, everyone doesn't get a cheap loan and stuff like that. And how you grade a school and stuff like that, that can be kind of difficult, not always. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Now you can pass laws to prevent people from making background deals and stuff like that, but it gets more and more complicated. But I think this is a step in the right direction. Higher taxes. So again, higher taxes on the wits and wealthy will promote less people for, would make administrators want to feel less motivated to make their salaries incredibly more because of this lesser return for more money. And the money could also level the gap, but higher taxes on rich people making their less rich. So they also want to cheap causes to be cheaper and stuff like that, which is one of the most expensive things they'll do. And now kind of make, um, and more affordable for the lower class, so a more progressive tax rate could help in some ways. Of course, it's not a solution, and it's more of a secondary impact. Now, those higher taxes also went into wealth redistribution. That will be even more, or to making public causes, or making, doing any of these things. Another idea I have is more housing off campus. Now, by the, what I mean by this is that campus housing costs the university a lot of money because they have to maintain it and everything. Having also housing all in on campus, not only is it costly for the college, as a way they can also increase the cost because they could, but making it mandatory that every college offers some um, housing off campus under certain conditions, the housing living off Campus also could mean that you could take care of your own kids if you have kids more. You could, if you have disability problems, it might work with that better. If you have a job, it might work better. And so on and so on. Now, it also means that college could serve more kids, cutting down the price. But there's some problems with housing off campus. One is that it could lead to gentrification where which kids go into town and start taking it over. So you might want to put some stipulations that you're only allowed to live off campus, you're not allowed to buy houses under certain, certain conditions or something, or that you use a tax on properties to make it less affordable. So you can make it so that um, kids, or you can put like, for example is, if a person owns more than one property, that they have a higher tax rate on both the properties. And 
or if they have or if they have investment property you have a higher tax another way is that you could say that cut down on rentals that are observant and give more pure housing directly and affordable for the government that live there or say that we have priority for people to live there for programs for staying in the rental place stuff like that so you would have to work it out also if there's no housing also might make it hard for people to tend calls as far away because they might cut back on housing so housing off campus is definitely something to look into but the programs have to be well thought out and designed much more than you initially think about year round well for calls figure out some way to op stay open year round more it could reduce costs because you don't have maintains cost of just maintaining the whole physical property without doing anything in the property such as you could have kids graduate faster and leave and get their job faster you could have kids take alternative schedules so instead of taking it the normal two month two semesters they take it two different uh, alternative semesters to work better for the jobs or other family activities or mix it up more for their own life or how their life is working and or you could have them take less classes per semester and spend them out more so they have more time to do a job or something else or um, not only jobs if you're disabled and need time off for your health or for family taking care of or whatever reason just making it more accessible in general this whole idea okay another option would be to offer more ways of doing calls at a slower pace and guaranteeing that calls is allowed for this the idea is if you let people do calls at a slower pace many things could happen it could become more affordable because you spread the cost over more years if it could also be on being more affordable if you have a disability and you can't push yourself as hard or you need to take time off because you're sick it could be better if you're any type of minority bad things are more likely to happen to you that's a fact unfortunate too but that means means, means you may need to take more time off cards or may take it more slowly to deal with the background bad stuff so slower cards might help a lot more people but also fast tracking calls might make it more affordable so having all the fast track options i've talked before because then um you can get a job to a job faster you might have to spend less on um housing for all those years and other mail programs and all those things because you only spend it on those couple years it's more it so if you can spend it on two years the same cost instead of four to two to half the cost because you only spend half, half the amount of years there it's it's a good idea something that is um something more about accessibility is alternative testing systems and grading systems and also making it more physically um offering physical accommodations on campus so we better things for wheelchair access moving and stuff could help a ton and that is because it will open up more disabled people and more people with alternative thinking styles to attend college it also make make the system fairer for people that come from different educational backgrounds or have different communication styles that might not just sync up with it maybe they speak a different vernacular of english that um is looked down upon certain types of testing but another testing they perform equally as well this this means that calls would have a wider pool of people pull in that will do well and that means they can make more money because they just have more people going to it it also might be cheaper in sometimes ways of testing them and anything to do with accessibility amendments beforehand would also work in this case is opening up more people going to college giving the colleges more money to pay back it also means eight investments less risky because if one out of 100 people fail instead of one out of 10 it's less of risk for them so they can lower the price because they're not factoring in as much of a high insurance for it as you always factor in in all these calculations Uh, another thing to increase this whole system is to offer more back to school programs for older people and this would also 
these people more likely have money with them if they're older and stuff and have a job with them or they even a child going to it or not but in some cases more money but they can give more investment for schools and pay back stuff for schools making it more affordable another and also the more people that educate the more people that can educate other people which will also make it cheaper you get more teachers um, another thing that could be done is to make the cost of publishing papers less. Um, the publishing industry has oftentimes an over 1,000% profit margin. It's even more because most of that goes to administrators and they don't count all the amount of money goes to administrators much. And this means that people spend a lot of money trying to publish their research. Now when they spend a lot of money trying to publish their research, this neg and then they also make research publishing very hard. This really negatively affects actually the amount of kids that can go to college because you sometimes professors pay for students and stuff. Now they can't pay for the students because they're paying to publish, literally, literally. Yeah. And then they can't do as good research. A professor that has all this bureaucracy, and this is also how administrators hurt, can't teach as well, or have as much time for teaching and research, so the college can't make as much money off of research can't um, can't uh, help the students as much. The, t the stu education goes down, the amount of students can research per one, the amount of lab time can goes down. But if there's less bureaucracy, if publishing costs less money, and all these things happen, it'll free up. Some estimates say that over 40% of the time that professors spend is on bureaucracy, and it's increasing, and not on actually doing experiments or teaching. So, huge way of helping there. Also, I know many professors that will take a pay cut for to, if the life was just easier in this way. Many would take a pay cut, a huge one, and that money could also go to that. Because it does it also cost your health and mental fortitude, which is a significant cost. Another way is that we just free up more money in society itself. And we could do that by making life just in general more affordable for people. So any welfare program, any good economic program, and more. Another way that we could do it is to make more job programs to hire people after school with education and stuff like that, so they have more money to pay for back the loans or cards. And there's been a lot of successful job programs throughout the year, the most famous being the New Deal in America, but it can be done successfully. And the government can help kick start jobs and make all that stuff, or hire more people. And, and you might say, well, there's not enough jobs. Left. There's enough jobs. There's not the money in the right places because it gets hoarded in the small places. But like, there's a lot of things that could be programmed better. There's a lot of um, roads that could be filled better. We have a shortage of doctors and nurses. We have a shortage of electrical engineers. We have a shortage of almost anything. And if you see that there's any problem in society, there's someone that could be working to fix it or doing stuff. Another way we can make this whole thing more affordable is to have more, is to have more TAs and course making people, material people, and people taking notes for other students, which also will help more students succeed and disabled ones that might have trouble taking notes in class or attending classes. And they're still learning. They learn off the notes of other people, but isn't a textbook notes that other people make? And all, everything, like, and like, even if they use an open notes on a test, it's still notes. Like in the real world, you use other people's notes all the time. It's called every single text and video or media you ever watch. And as long as you didn't just make it by yourself. Then, so yeah, there's that. It's just offering more jobs. More research, um, if you have more research programs going on, that could get more kids in to this whole thing. More, yeah, just more. But you could also have more of them doing, colleges doing art programs, and we could fund more art programs such as theater and stuff with kids from schools or 
you could have them building houses and learning about architects and stuff. All the stuff you could have them doing that could actually pay the bills in lots of ways, but also give them valuable experience. The um, second to last one, and I'll go back to the last one that I forgot to list here, is non-tax accounts or special accounts like this Roth IRAs and stuff like that for more retirement. But I'm saying buying up for paying for college or paying back college loans. So to promote people going to colleges, and they would save up. Now these ones would also have to, um, these ones would also have to, you could even have them also made for, for your kids. So you start saving for your kids, foods in line for years. But all the ones for making more money and stuff work better, but you do have to side of actually controlling the causes so the causes don't see more money and start increasing the prices more. With profit, it also is to keep the elitist in hierarchy in place, not even to make more money. But you could turn the flip the script that they can make more money if they have more kids, even if the kids cost a lower price. But also some of it is the hierarchy that they just don't want people of certain groups and groups to attend causes. Well, the last one is that you could have people kind of go ahead of college and offer more high school programs and stuff to jumpstart when they get into college. And therefore, they would have to spend less time and less money in college. Now, programs that also go through college faster it means that college has a higher turnout, but they can offer the same price. So it doesn't really hurt the bottom line. In fact, it might increase it, even if it doesn't increase the cost of college and lowers it. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. If you have any ideas for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. I'm trying to, and I'm also trying to reach a thousand subscribers in a year and 4,000 watch hours, which is really hard, but with your help, I think I can do it. Thank you very much. Goodbye.